Amen. Praise the Lord. Today, I want to talk about hindrances to walking in the authority of Jesus Christ. There's so much that can hinder us nowadays. We live in the information age where everybody can grab a hold of knowledge. They can grab a hold of any knowledge they want. However, it depends on what knowledge that you're grabbing. Amen. I believe that as you age, as a person ages, must keep their brain active, read and learn things. But the best knowledge that we can have is knowledge from the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior need to stay in the word of God nowadays because people get pulled left and right and can't recover back into Christianity. You know, we can walk away from God. All it takes is just one incident to happen in a person's life. Just one thing. And they may have served the Lord with all their heart, preached the gospel, led people to Jesus, did the ministry of Jesus Christ. And it all go down the drain with one incident. But not with God, with that person maybe, but not with God. Because the grace of God is just that powerful. And if he had grace enough to save a person before they knew him, he has grace enough to forgive a person for something they think is unforgivable. But as we are serving the Lord, as we are walking in Christianity, we must use all of the resources that we have while we have them. I'm talking about the resources of the word of God. I'm talking about the authority of Jesus Christ that he gave us. You know, sometimes in this life, there are emergency situations. But if we have not maintained our walk with Jesus Christ, we will not respond to the occasion of an emergency properly. We probably will respond in fear. There must be maintenance in our Christianity, maintenance of staying in the Bible, maintenance of prayer, maintenance of speaking the word of God, using the name of Jesus in our everyday life. Some may not use the name of Jesus until there's an emergency situation. But we should use the name of Jesus in our daily lives to keep our spirit man exercised, to keep our spirit man ready. We want to be ready. Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We were raised before Christ to think that we have all the power. We are responsible for the power for what goes on in our lives. All the responsibility is on us. But Jesus is saying here, he gives us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, you're a baby Christian just knowing that and you get a hold of that scripture and you use it. You have just as much power as the most seasoned Christian because of the name 
of Jesus. It is not our power. We must realize as we use the name of Jesus and we start to see things happen in the spirit realm, we must be careful not to get prideful, not to think that it's us doing it. And those are the times that we've got to get the flesh under subjection. Oh, I'm not going to start talking about fasting this morning. But as you grow deeper in the Lord, it's not really deep. It's something that Christians should be doing. Christians should be speaking the name of Jesus. Luke 9, 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. See, there's devils. There are things that we have to contend with, but everything is not a devil. And that is the balance of Christianity that we need to get to. A lot of Christians, when they find out that the devil is real, the devil is more powerful than Jesus because they're always concentrating on the devil and what the devil is doing. But we must learn how to concentrate on the power of Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ can do and what the love of God can do to our spirits. First John 4, 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Them. We've overcome them because of Jesus Christ in us, but we must tap into that power. We must learn how to walk in that power. Yes, Jesus gave us that power and authority, but we must learn how to walk in it by using it, by quietly using it. We don't have to walk around commanding in the name of Jesus and all that. You can just whistle and it's just as effective as screaming it. Yes, we get all excited. Y'all know, Pastor Dennis, I don't know if y'all seen me over the years, but sometimes when I was learning how to preach and when I was preaching, I'd get excited. I started to shout. But if you would see in a prayer session, where it's important when you're praying for someone, you don't have to shout the name of Jesus. If you see the devil acting up, you know your authority. So you can speak the name of Jesus and it's just as effective. And in order to know our authority in the Bible and in the name of Jesus, we must stay full of the word of God. We must continue to have the word of God as our companion. He's raging. The enemy is raging. So let's look at some hindrances that may prevent a Christian from walking in the authority of Jesus and learn how to overcome these hindrances first of all many believers are not walking in the authority of jesus christ because they do not know that they have it we can hear teachings about it all day we can hear good sermons about anything all day but until we actually practice it practice and speak what we have learned we will not see the results for ourselves we might see somebody else doing it and admire it and wish we could do it but the bible has made it available for all believers and that's one misconception in the body of christ because the little people sit on the pew have looked to the leaders to be the ones to operate in the power. But Jesus in Luke 10, 19 wasn't just talking to leaders. He was talking to his disciples that were present 
and the ones that would read the word of God. Any little reader that reads the word of God can operate in the authority of Jesus Christ. But we must desire it with all of our hearts. We must ask God to open our eyes to let us see what we need to see and open our ears to let us hear what we need to hear to be able to move in the flow of the spirit realm with God. It's not deep. It's what God has given us. It's what every person that is part of the great commission should be walking in, not just leaders, not just pastors, not just big bishops and evangelists and all these big people. It's not about that because that's worshiping humans. That's worshiping the creation of God. And God doesn't want us to worship creation. He wants us to worship him. Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Watch where you get your knowledge. Just because they say Jesus and just because they're saying something that you've heard somebody else say, you have to let your spirit that's full of the word of God and the Holy Spirit be your guide. And if you get a check in your spirit, don't worry about how many people are following them. Don't worry about how big their ministry is. You've got to take care of your spirit. Because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God, I will also forget thou children. So the knowledge of the word of God is available to all that call upon the name of Jesus to all that have asked Jesus to save them, not just the fivefold ministry. Y'all have heard me preach this and I have to interject it here and there because I've seen it to be an issue over my years in the ministry. I've seen it be an issue. Develop and love the Bible. If God put you in the pew of a church, I'm talking to the church hoppers today a little bit. Those virtual church hoppers and those on ground church hoppers. If God put you in a church, be there or do your best to listen to the whole teaching and look up the scriptures or if you can't make it we know that people work we know that people have obligations listen to the whole teaching and then look up the scriptures or you may miss blocks of information did you ever take algebra in school and you were sick a couple of days or you pray you hooky <laughs> And then you got back to school and they were talking about something and you're like, you know why that puzzled look came and that question mark came in your mind is because of missing blocks of information. Every little teaching in the word of God is a building block towards building up your spirit and spiritual growth. Every little teaching, if it's not that, it's a spark in you or an inspiration in you to go and investigate the Bible for yourself, not to allow or to think that the pastor or the teacher that you're under is supposed to do all the Bible study for you and do all the referencing for you and look up all the scriptures for you. That's not how you learn. 
That's not how you walk in the spirit. That's not how you use your or learn your authority in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. If you're down, depressed in the dumps and you know the authority of Jesus Christ and you don't use it or you use it one time and you say it's not working, you stop, then you will never get out of your depression. I'm not knocking doctors. But use the word of God first. Use the resources that the word of God and that you've heard me preach resources. I'm going to put my plug in now about uh, prayer and fasting, about fasting. That's a resource. And it's a powerful resource, but it's not desired by most human beings, especially in today's time because of the food industry. They make everything look so good on that picture <laughs> and you get it and it's nothing like the picture. <laughs> it might taste good, but it's not like the picture. The picture is like that, that hook line and sinker to pull you in. But then when you fast, you're like telling you're taking charge of this. And the unseen part of this. You're taking charge. As to say no. You're not having it. Because you will have it when I give it to you. Don't let your body drive you. Take charge of your own body. That's how you do that. Hey. We all have to. Eat comfortable sometimes. I love comfort food. But then there's a time to get serious, especially if it's keeping us, if it's keeping me from living the life that God wants me to live. Don't miss blocks of information that may help you connect all the dots of the word of God. They will help you to connect. It takes time. It takes time, sometimes years upon years, and we'll still be connecting when Jesus Christ comes. We're always learning. But the best way to learn is by doing. Take the opportunity to come and learn when you can or listen to the messages. The Holy Spirit can teach you more. As you apply what you have already been taught. We've been taught a lot of the word over the years. But all of what I'm saying is just encouragement. It's not a mandate. It's not a requirement. Please don't get me wrong. It's not a requirement. I am not trying to tell anybody how to live their life. I'm just trying to preach the word. Also remember that just knowing, just knowing knowledge can make you prideful. First Corinthians eight, one now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge, knowledge puffeth up, puffeth up means prideful, but charity Edify is knowing a lot of stuff can make you prideful. It's not a race to determine how much we can know just for the sake of knowing. We must try to live the word of God to the best of our ability and become more like Jesus. That's the goal to become more like Jesus. When we become Christians, we need to develop. I was talking about spiritual eyes and ears. We need to develop spiritual eyes and ears as Christians. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, it comes by revelation of the spirit. 
not by knowledge. It comes by revelation of the spirit. Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. We must develop our spiritual eyes, ears, and mind. There's a such thing. There is a such thing, but it's simple. It's not complicated. If it's complicated, then it might be dark. I was thinking of the word esoteric, but it may be dark if it's complicated. The word of God and the things of God are simple. Stay close to the word of God and prayer. Develop your word life and prayer life. Get as much of the word in you as possible. Especially when you're going through tough times. When you're going through hard times, rely on the word of God. Go to the word first. We have all we need to walk in this life as Christians. Second Peter 1, 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. A lot of Christians may wonder, why am I so weak in the faith? Why can't I move mountains like such and such can? Why can't I do like such and such can? You can. All you have to do is apply yourself in the word of God. Just read. You don't have to read. Try to read the whole Bible. Start small. Read five or ten scriptures. Read as much as you want to read. But I encourage you not to try and understand it like you would a novel or another type of book. Because your spirit man is getting it. Your spirit man, not the brain. Yes, yeah, going through your brain, but it's for the spirit. And your spirit man has to learn how to walk with God, has to learn how to function with God. So read the word, whether you understand what it's saying or not, read it and practice using the name of Jesus every day. Not only in times of great emergency, seek to stay hot for Jesus, hot for Jesus. You got to be somewhat hot for the Lord nowadays or you may be on the fence to fall away. You may have been a Christian for 25, 30 years, but that doesn't give anyone the license to slack up. We have to keep our own relationships hot for the Lord. Another hindrance, number two, another hindrance to walking in the authority of Jesus Christ is spiritual laziness. If we want spiritual growth and authority in the name of Jesus Christ, we should put forth the effort. Spiritual growth is something we seek as a Christian, and it comes in God's timing, not our own timing. We can't make it happen. Only way, only participation we have is seeking God and putting the word of God in us. If not, we can become cold in the Lord. Proverbs 13, 4, the soul of a sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be fat. Be diligent, be consistent in what you're doing. Those that do physical fitness know that being consistent is what gets results. Hit and miss doesn't get results. Going to God when you're just down and out and just go to God. Yes, God allows us to put him on like a raincoat. He doesn't reject us. But we should go to God when the sun's shining 
when things are good and when things are bad. But don't ever give up on God. Everyone goes through peaks and valleys. We need to pick up ourselves and keep going. Amen. And worry about our own Christianity. We can't worry about our sons and daughters and friends and all their Christianity. If they come to us, if they if somebody comes to me and asks me questions, I can answer their questions, but I'm not in charge of their Christianity. I'm not the overseer of their Christianity. I'm not the overseer of your Christianity. I just preach the word. I just inspire and point you to Jesus. But I'm not inside your body telling you or making you or requiring you to get it. That's something that has to come from within. You've got to have a hunger and a thirst. Yes, we all need each other in the body of Christ. We need each other. We need fellowship. That's what I was talking about early about coming to church. We need fellowship that strengthens us. But everyone has their own responsibility to walk with Jesus. We've got to take care of ourselves while we're taking care of somebody else. Take care. I've got to take care of my Christianity unless it falls short. Unless I fall short from giving, 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 giving. Even with our family members, even with the ones closest to us. Yes, it hurts us to see them going through what they're going through. But everyone has to make decisions. That's what I was praying about this morning about prayer warriors. We need prayer warriors in our families. That's where you can be effective. Prayer. Learn to pray and start asking God to let you see the answers coming forth. Ask God to start letting you see some of the things that he's doing through your prayers. So that you're not just praying blindly, just praying and hoping that it's going to happen. Yes, please do pray and hope. But I believe there's another dimension to where we can see what God is doing. We want to see what God is doing. So we can be encouraged. So we can encourage others. And as a church, that's the value of a church. If everyone gets it, that's a powerful church. But if you have some that do, some that don't, which you always will. And it's okay. Everyone doesn't have the same walk with Jesus, but that doesn't mean they don't belong to God. There's no judgment and condemnation. But everyone has to walk their own walk. If someone asks you a question, answer their question. But you can't tell them how to live for God. And you, you can't make them live for God. Spiritual laziness. Hebrews 6, 12 says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise if other followers have done it in the word of God Hebrews talks about them if other patriarchs have done it so can we but there are no shortcuts we need to do the Lord's work we must seek study pray and obey his word to the best of our abilities and pray and use the name of Jesus every day. Don't forget. Keep your spirit man alive by using the name of Jesus. That's how we train our spirit man to walk 
in the authority of Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter one, verses four through nine shows a spiritual growth ladder. And it's something we can shoot for. It's a spiritual growth ladder. It says whereby are giving unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Look at that. Partakers of the divine nature. That doesn't mean we're divine. We're to partakers of the divine nature. Becoming more like Jesus. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Verse five, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Verse six, and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at those words there. Barren or unfruitful. That's part of our examination of our own Christianity. Is there barrenness or unfruitfulness in our walk with Jesus or in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ? Verse nine, but he that lacketh these things is what? Blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. There's a lot there in those scriptures. Faith is more than just a belief in the Bible. Faith results in loving action towards others. How about that one? This may be contrary to how we acted before Christianity. But the kicker here is. When the others are our enemies, I said faith results in loving actions toward others. What about when the others are your enemies? Can I still show loving action toward my enemies? People can be motivated to do evil to one another. Growing in faith is also growing in Christian character. This can only happen through the power of the Holy Spirit working in us as we see God referencing the fruit of the Spirit. This power of the Holy Spirit allows the fruit of the Spirit to come forth in our lives. And that's what we want. Verse four. I stopped there a minute when I was reading verse four says we are allowed to be partakers of the divine nature that translates into becoming more like Jesus. This helps us avoid sin and do what we could not do before Jesus before Jesus. We would have done anything that tickled our fancy. Anything that looked good to us or that excited us, we wanted to do it. But now as a Christian, we shouldn't have that. We can avoid sin and do what we could not do before Jesus. Another one is praying nicely or godly for our enemies. <laughs> I 
nicely or godly for our enemies. It nicely or godly doesn't mean it's not powerful. Anything that involves the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit is powerful. I'm just using terms that we might be able to, to understand nicely or godly. Prayer or you can pray that they can come to know Jesus. How about that? Pray that they can come to know Jesus. Remember, no sending death and destruction. Don't send death to people. We don't hold the power of death. Jesus does. Don't send death and destruction. Don't send hate. Get them, get them, God. Get them. All you got to do is send the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows how to handle matters. We don't know how to handle stuff in our humanity. We want to pray vengeance. We want to pray death and destruction. We want to pray get back. What if God gets, gets us back? He said, if you don't forgive your enemies, I can't forgive you. That's what the Bible says. I don't have the scripture references. If you cannot forgive your enemies, neither can I forgive you. Send the power of the Holy Spirit. No power that's a power can resist the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's symbols are fire. Water, oil, wind. They're not death. And by the way, power belongs to God. So we cannot just use God's power to accomplish our means, to accomplish our, what we want to be accomplished because we're upset. Because we're vengeful. Because we're angry. Because that's what we were taught. No. That's not the right thing to do. God. The Holy Spirit. No power can resist the power of the Holy Spirit. Spoken in the authority of the name of Jesus. This, that's hard. That's. Don't repay evil with evil. That's one of the teachings of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. Don't repay evil with evil. We got to learn that. We have to relearn when we become Christians. We've got to relearn because we've learned things and we've operated in things before Christianity that made our flesh feel good, that made us feel satisfied because we got somebody back. You did that, I got you back though. So we feel accomplished. But did it accomplish the work of the Lord? When we're born again, God by his spirit empowers us with his goodness shown in John chapter three, verse six, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Mind you, there are two in the spirit. There's the forces of evil and the forces of good. Our spirit should not be mixed. Good or evil. The Bible says sweet water and bitter water can't come out of the same fountain. 
We've got to decide who we're serving here. Are we doing the works of God or are we doing the works of Satan? That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born under the spirit is spirit. We must grow or die in the spirit. Becoming born again is just the beginning. A baby must crawl and then walk. But to walk, they must eventually stand on their feet. And have you ever seen a baby when it's getting ready to walk? It wants to walk so bad you can see it all over their face. And that's how we've got to be throughout our Christianity. And when it starts to cool off, guess what? Encourage yourself in the Lord. Don't wait on a sermon for the pastor to preach that's going to encourage you. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You've got the same Bible. You've got the same Holy Ghost. But you've got the same resources that a pastor has or that any evangelist has. That any other Christian has. Being born again and being empowered by the Holy Spirit is also shown in John chapter 14, verses 16 through 23. Jesus tells his followers and future followers of their empowerment with the Holy Spirit. We were doing a, a series on the Holy Spirit. We we were into like three or four teachings. I think it's four teachings. We're going to go back soon, but please review your notes or the, the scripture sheets that you have. If you haven't looked up any of the scriptures, please look up those scriptures and get that word into your heart. So when we start back on that series, you won't be totally in the dark. Also, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Our righteousness, authority, and power are due to the work of Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. So let's use the work of the gospel to glorify God, not to glorify our emotions or glorify anything else but to glorify God. Another hindrance to walking in the authority of Jesus Christ is resistance to change and transformation. How many are resistance to change? How many are stubborn to change or reject change? We may have said, this is just the way I am. I've always been like this. I'm changing for nobody. We must be willing to change, especially as you age. <laughs> especially as you age. I'm telling you, I'm still a young man. <laughs> So I'm a baby, so I still got learning to do. I've got learning to do, learning that God wants to impart into me so he could use me and us even further in his kingdom. So we can change the, that's just the way I am. We will change as we submit ourselves to the spirit of God. It may not come overnight, but the Lord will make a way where there seems to be no way as we put ourselves and into the word of God and use our resources. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to what you always were because we might miss God on something but be ye transformed changed by the renewing renewing changing love the enemies before you hated them you want to take vengeance against them but it says 
transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what the word of God does. It renews, it changes your mind as you put yourself, as you want to be changed, you seek change. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't copy what you see someone else do. <laughs> That's popular nowadays. I see somebody else doing it, so I'm going to do it in my, I see them doing it in their family. I'm going to do it in mine. You might not get the same results. You might get worse results. Because you don't know the dynamics of their household. But you're just doing what they do. Don't copy. Do what the scripture says. Be changed by renewing your mind. Will I allow God to change me? Renew. God wants us to be new and improved. <laughs> renew. That's what renew is. New and improved. No, I'm not going to say that. Second. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any person be in Christ, he is a new creature. Creature. He didn't say person. It says creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new as we open up and receive what the spirit of God. We can keep them old. We can keep the, the, the things that we used to do. The bad things, the good things we call them good that we used to do. Or we can do what God wants us to do in accordance with his word. We respect our family line. But we have a new blood and a part of God's family. The Bible says now we can be, we saw it in 2 Peter 1, 4, partakers of the divine nature. We got a lot to look forward to as Christians. The Bible says we can be partakers of the divine nature. So we want to walk in the authority of Jesus Christ and use the name of Jesus with power. Use, avoid resisting what God wants to do in us. Don't resist it. He wants us to put off the old man and put on the new. Resistance hinders our authority in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, that ye... That word ye in the Bible means you, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Look at that. The former conversation, the old man. Don't talk about too much about what you used to do because it's going to be like food. When you start talking about food, you get hungry for it. You want to eat it. So don't talk about the things that you used to talk about because it's going to stir up your flesh. And if it's not dead or close to dead, you're going to give heed to your flesh. It's going to happen. Then you'll be repenting. But if you don't change, you're going to be doing going in a vicious circle. Vicious circle. The old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We will be changed by and by. By and by means soon. As we submit to the power of God working in us. James 4, 7 through 10. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw nigh to you. I said near, but draw nigh, which means near to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. 
Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. When I said that by and by, and I said it means soon, I thought of the song. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king well, soon and very soon. We are going to see the king, hallelujah, soon and very soon. We are going to see the king, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. Oh, no more crying there. We are going to sing the king. Hallelujah. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, I hope I see you there. I'm going to see the king. Well, I hope I see you there. We are going to see the king. We hope I see you there. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to see the king. Hey, hallelujah. Somebody got excited up in here. Hey, man, God bless you. Thanks for being with us today. May God bless you and your family this week, today, this week. And may you have peace like a river in Jesus' name. Amen.